to Elliot. Oh, the oh! The shot. Bedoya with a goal. One nothing Union. Hey everyone, welcome back to Union Insider, presented by Beanbo Bakeries USA, where we sit down, talk things Philadelphia Union, alongside two Philly favorites, Bachelin Two and Shane and Williams. I'm Marissa Pilla. The Union were in the national spotlight on Sunday, taking on Atlanta United in an afternoon matchup on Fox. However, the lights appeared to be just a little too bright for the boys in blue as they fell to Atlanta 2-0. Overall, a pretty lackluster performance from the Union. We'll get into the nitty gritty of it all, but generalizing this performance, what was the biggest mishap for you? I think it was just uh, the energy, I think, in the game. We don't really feel any time uh, during the 90 minutes. Uh, the team was you know, playing very well. We feel like I feel they didn't connect very well offensively, especially with Carranza, Roa and Gazdag. So I think the energy from the beginning of the game, we saw an early goal again from Atlanta to give you know, the lead quickly in this game. The start was not good and it came from the energy you put into this game. For me, it was a formation. I thought that putting Leon Flock at left wing back didn't really work. We saw them get out of that formation as soon as they got into halftime and, and made some adjustments. But I think that was the biggest thing for me is that it just didn't work out for them. And sometimes you try some stuff out and it doesn't come off. And I think that's just one of those games where it didn't come off. Let's dive a little deeper into that formation because Kai Wagner was not available due to injury. And so, as you said, Leon Flock kind of slotted into that position. He looked so out of place in certain moments. What could have he done better? For me, it's just about being a little bit more disciplined to stay out on that left side. I thought when he vacated it and went into the middle, that's when Atlanta looked to expose and try to get behind. And you saw it for the first uh, set piece that they end up scoring off of getting in behind Harriel. There's usually a little bit of cover when you have a left wing back. Flock's not normally in that position. I thought that that really helped them, Atlanta, at, at least get into the game. Going forward, is Flock the, the best choice? What, what would you decide? I think it could be one of, uh, of them, but they need to keep working in this type of system with him being on the left side. I think, you know, being paired with Ariel on the left, he's young as well, didn't play a lot that position. So you see, like, communication was probably like, a key between those two to be in the right position, especially defensively. But uh, Flock being on the left, it could be one of the options, but I think Jim Curtin with Kai Wagner might be the best choice. Right. And then offensively, this was only the fifth time this season the Union were shut out this year. Year. and against an Atlanta team that's given up the most goals in the East. Seva, where was the breakdown offensively? I mean, I think we always talk about it. When the team is doing well, it's when you see Gazdag more on the ball, and I don't think we really find him. A credit to Atlanta, who did a good job, you know, making sure the pass doesn't go through at number 10. We didn't do as much as a good job for us, you know, with Almada, but the fact that Gazdag didn't touch the ball, I think, make our offense not really good, and we didn't create a lot of chances. And for me, it was the fact that they didn't really adjust while they were playing on turf. I thought their connection and their front three was a little bit off all night. Uh, you could see that they were missing little details, and I thought that they struggled in that, in that Atlanta turf. We, we talked about that heading into this weekend's game, about the turf and how much it plays a difference. You were there. You were on the radio call in person. What did it really look like? It was short. Uh, they, they watered the field at least three or four times, which we all know that turf doesn't grow. So <laughs> that made it a little bit slippery and slick. And I thought that that led to some, some missed chances and some missed opportunities for the Union. So a loss for the Union. They dropped this one in Atlanta. But we know there's always room to grow, always lessons to learn. What do you think is the biggest takeaway for the team? I think, again, for them, it's just the start of the game. If they start well, if they really put the energy, I think they usually have a good game. But the fact that they give up a goal after seven minutes in this game, then you know you are chasing. You play Atlanta team who play with confidence, and it's very hard to come back in a game. So now they have two more you know, uh, you know, road games in LA and in Nashville, two tough plays to play out. So they need to really start well over there to get some good results. I think they just need to be safe at the beginning of games and make sure that they're not conceding a goal. I don't think that they're a team that can play from behind and, and really chase games. So they need to make sure that they're sound defensively at the beginning of the game and then grow into the game as it goes on. I think that's their best way to, to pick up points on the road. That's best case scenario is that you go up a goal early, but it, the, in life and in soccer, you're going to get down a goal. So what changes for them to be able to get back into these games that maybe they haven't been able to be doing this season? I think especially on the road, it, it gets difficult. You're, you're not in the confines of your own building. And, and when a team goes up, they start to build in confidence. And I think that that 
doesn't lead well for the union and leads to disappointing results. I know that they were able to climb back in it against Orlando, but that's not something that they want to have to do every time that they get out on the road is, is go behind and have to come back. So I think, again, just playing a little bit more defensively on the road and then looking to maybe use the counterattack a little bit more can help them try to pick up some more points on the road. So we want to dive a little deeper into some themes from Sunday's result, as well as some overarching themes for the season in a new segment we're calling Onsides Offsides. The premise is pretty simple. I'm going to pose a statement to each of you. If you agree with it, you write down onsides. If you disagree, you write down offsides. So you guys got it? Sounds good. Ready to go? First up, is it fair to say that the union's offensive output recently is cause for concern? Onsides if you agree, offsides if you disagree. All right, and the reveal, here we go. Differing opinions off the bat. I love this. Shannon, you go first. For me, they're on the same kind of trajectory as they were last year. And last year was one of their highest scoring outputs that they've had in, in club history. So I think that they're not far off of it. They're missing a couple of details and, and they've had a kind of a roller coaster start. But I think that the forwards that they have and the attacking players that they have will start to click a little bit more, especially as they get back to, to home turf and, and get through this season. I think that they'll be right on pace, if not a little bit uh, ahead of where they were last year. And you disagree? Yeah, I disagree. It's onside just for me because, like you said, the concern is the offense at home. It's so good. But then you see them away and it's a completely different thing. So it's a bit concerning to me because it doesn't click as good as they do when they play at home. I know it's a bit different to play in front of your fans, but they need to be a better job for me when they play away. And now they have two big road you know, games happening. So they need to really play the same way as they play at home. All right. All right. I think they're both fair statements. So next up, erase your boards. Again, onsides you agree, offsides you disagree. Daniel Gazdag needs to seek the ball out more to facilitate the offense. So have you got to catch up. Shannon's already done. <laughs> oh, yeah. I All like right. to write very Oh, look at that. They both agree. Onsides, he has to seek the ball out more, Seb? Uh, yeah, I mean, we talk about it. The offense last year came from him. You know, he had the MVP season. This year, it's kind of uh, on the same way, but you don't see him as much in the game, especially when they play away. We saw the other time we saw in Atlanta this weekend. When he's not on the ball, there's not a lot happening. But when he is and when he's moving and if he come low, I think it's where his teammates see him and find him. I think it's somebody that the union need to get going and somebody that's had an, an OK start to the season, but he can do more. And as the number 10, they need him to really be the engine, the, the person that ignites their offense. When he's clicking, they score multiple goals. When they lose, it's mostly because he hasn't touched the ball a lot. Now, that can be because they're not finding him enough, but it also can be that he's not coming and finding the ball. So he needs to have a balance of doing a little bit of both, where when they're clicking, staying higher, staying connected to the forwards, and when they're not clicking, maybe going down, being a little bit more of an option to, to get them started out of the back. So it's both him seeking those opportunities, but also the team finding them for him as well. Yeah, Absolutely. exactly. Because you have like Timu now have a game plan against him, so he needs to kind of get out of like the position he is to not be always marked by some probably team who you show him, you know, like some people follow him all the game. Right. So they are always, you know, on him. And now his teammate doesn't really want to pass the ball to him because he's not as free. So he has to find a way to get more balls, that's for sure. We're stepping away for a bit, but first it's time for this week's Union Trivia Question presented by United Concordia. Who has the record for most assists in a single season in Union history? Find out the answer later in the show. We're back with This Week in Union History presented by Premier Orthopedics. This week in 2022, the Union earned their most lopsided win in team history, putting a whopping seven goals past DC United in a 7-0 win at Subaru Park. This was spearheaded by a hat trick from Julian Carranza, his first in a Union shirt. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Marissa Pilla and it's time now for our first team report presented by Green Mountain Energy. The union took a trip down south this past weekend and came back empty handed against Atlanta. This weekend, they'll head out west and look to bring home three points against the second worst team in the west, LA Galaxy. Let's take a listen to what Jim Curtin had to say about the union heading into this matchup. It's, it's uh, been since 2019 since we played the Galaxy, so it's been a, been a while. It's obviously always great to go out there on the West Coast, and uh, there's usually a great atmosphere, and 
uh, they're a team, like you said, that's in good form. I think has been deserved in their performances of more points than they, they have right now. But at the same time, they're in, in real good form, uh, haven't been beaten in a while. And uh, it starts with, with Ricky Puig, who's been excellent for them in the center of the field. So again, tough matchup. It'll be a tough game. They have a little bit of probably fatigue uh, on their legs playing uh, on the fourth, but it's always difficult to travel uh, and, and go against a team that uh, you know has a lot of individual weapons that can beat you. All right, I have the fellas back here with me to break down this LA Galaxy matchup. As you can tell by the graphic behind me, we're turning a new page to this LA team. And when you look at the Galaxy by the numbers, they're 13th in the West. They only have 19 points this season and just four wins. But as we know, the numbers only tell part of the story. What is your full scouting report for LA? I mean, when you look at uh, their name in their teams, they have a lot of great players, but right now, really at the beginning of the season, they got a, a terrible start, and then it was very hard for them to kind of get above, you know, the, the wave now with a great win in the Classico last week. Uh, I think the momentum of the team feel maybe might change, so it's maybe not a good time for the Union to go there and play, so it's going to be interesting to see what momentum they're going to bring into this game, because on the paper, like you say, it should be an easy win from the Union, but with a trip, you know, with a flight over there and having a Galaxy team more confident, it might be a tough game for the team. Yeah, the Galaxy are unbeaten in their last six matches, so what do the Union need to be mindful of in this one? With no Chicharito, they're a team that's struggling to score goals, so the Union needs to do a good job of, of making sure they're set up defensively. And then on the flip side of it, they've given up the second most goals only to Atlanta, so there will be chances in the game that you need to do a good job of, of making sure that they have a good start, like Seba talked about earlier, and then build into the game from there. Can they start to get the first goal on the road and then start to build? So we saw the Union play Atlanta, as you said. They've given up the most goals in the East Atlanta. Union didn't score a single one. So how do the Union have a different output offensively against LA? It's just in the mentality, the way they attack the game. I think they were maybe coming in at length like, oh, for sure, we are going to score tonight. Maybe they didn't do as much effort to make the team on, on top of the game. So LA is the same. You can look at the paper and you are like, oh, they're not going to be you know, too hard to beat. But now with the momentum they have, I think the team need to really come hungry because I think the last, the next two road games for them in LA and in Nashville, I think we really put the season, you know, towards like, are we fighting for the higher spot or we just have to fight for a spot in the playoff for the team? So you think LA is the road trip that they can get the most points out of between this one and Nashville? Yeah, and they need to put together two good halves. I think in the Atlanta game, once they came out of halftime, they started to push the game, but it's a wasted first half. So they need to make sure that they're putting together two complete halves. And then like Seba talked about earlier, just having a better start to the game. As we know, the Union are heading across country to face the LA Galaxy this weekend, so it means they're going to need some keys to get there. And this is time for our Keys to the Game presented by Subaru. We're going to ask Seba and Shannon for their key to get a win against Galaxy. I know we kind of talked around the overarching themes, but let's get super specific in this one. Shannon, your key. My key to the game is going to be getting on the end of crosses. We know that LA has given up the second most goals uh, in MLS this year. Can the Union do a good job of sending numbers into the box? We know that they usually have one or two of their forwards, but they need to add on to that with not only Gazdog if he's at the number 10, but also maybe Flock, Bedoya. That's going to give them the best chance to score goals, even if it's right off the, the first cross or off of rebounds. And for me, I think keep an eye on Ricky Pooch. We all know like the game in Atlanta, we know Almada, we need to keep an eye on him. He got one goal, one assist. I think Ricky Pooch for this team in LA is a kind of the type of same player We can really beat you by a great pass he's doing, but sometimes by his run as well, and he can score a goal like he did in his last game. So he's coming more confident to the league. He knows he has to prove more. He didn't make you know, the All-Star game, so I think it's a big motivation for him to have a great second half of the season, but we need to really have an eye on him because he can make the difference. Right, he had an assist and the game-winning goal against LAFC. Whose job is it to contain him, or is it an effort from the whole team? It's an effort from the whole team. I think it's somebody that's going to float around and try to find the ball in different areas. So they need to make sure that even when the union do have the ball, that they're keeping an eye on where he's popping up. Won't do as much of the defensive work. So again, it'll be a big job for Martinez. And Seba talked about the runs in the box, making sure that they pass him on and making sure that he stays contained and marked up for the entire game. Yeah, and I think communication is huge, I think, in his game between the defense to really pass him along because he's not a player who's going to stay in the midfield. He's going to be frustrated, come low. Sometimes you get the ball, maybe a you know, long pass, but you need to have a good communication between everybody in the team to mark him. And then you've played out in L.A. too. What can the union expect about playing in that kind of an environment? 
it's a really big field and, and there's a lot of space. So again, he's going to be a player that looks to find that space and they need to make sure that they're containing areas of the field where, where he can be a danger. I think that in the Atlanta game, they struggle with Almada when he started to go float out wide. Uh, for the second goal, he floats out wide, comes inside and finds the weak side. So again, it's going to be uh, all hands on deck in terms of, of making sure that they defend LA's most important player. Let's take a look at some action from Match Day 21 in MLS Around the League presented by Torque. Another week, another Galazzo in MLS. This one was off the foot of Matthias Pellegrini as this one lifted NYCFC over CF Montreal 1-0, snapping an 11-match winless streak for New York. And finally, Randall Leal put this one in the back of the net for his second goal of the game as his performance won his man of the match day in MLS as Nashville squad beat DC United 2-0. Union Insider returns after the break, but first, here's a preview of the latest Union Way episode, which you can watch on the Union's YouTube channel. Let's take a look. Uh, we had them on the ropes a little bit, right? We were the better team in the half. There's no question about that. Uh, but again, now, we need 45 more minutes. We are better than this team in every position on the field. Every position. So there is no excuse for us to not take three points. Step on the field with confidence, pass and move for each other, we'll break these guys down. Everybody's got to do the running defensively, but in every position, we're better than this team. Let's go, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Time for this week's Chick-fil-A Nugget of the Week. Jose Martinez was selected to his first MLS All-Star game last week. Martinez is the fourth current union player to be selected to the All-Star team, joining Andre Blake, Kai Wagner, and Jacob Glesnez. Hey everyone, welcome back to Union Insider, presented by Beanbo Bakeries USA. I'm Marissa Pilla, that's Sebastian Latou and Shannon Williams. Let's have a look at this week's player profile, presented by Subaru. Whether it's in the 4-4-2 diamond and their 3-5-2, Olivier Mbizo is a key component to the Union's back line. You can often see him flying up the wing to lead the attack or getting back to stop a counterattack on defense. Bizo has been able to facilitate both on both sides of the ball, and luckily for us, we have an offensive-minded player and a defensive-minded player, so I want each of you to speak to his uh, skills and attributes on both sides of the ball. So, Seba, you take the offensive role. Uh, I think he's pretty calm on the ball when he has it. I think he always left one or good move offensively. When he got a good you know, chance in the crosses, I think he can deliver a good ball. So I think his uh, you know, stamina as well, you can really see him go up and down, up and down, and not be shy. I think it's this year we thought maybe it was a fight between him and Ariel for the right back position, but I think he really solidified his position as a starter you know, this season. Doesn't do as many big mistakes we have been doing. I think it was very positive for him. And defensively, what stands out? I think he's a really good 1v1 defender. I think he's somebody that can shut the, the opposing winger down, and he's done that more times than he hasn't. And, the other part of it is the communication part, and I can see him out there talking to the guys in front of him, which, which makes his job a lot easier on the defensive side of the ball. So he's somebody that, that I think Jim Curtin trusts in, and has been a staple in their back line and somebody that's, like you said, playing game in, game out. And that's, that's huge when you have that continuity and somebody that, that you believe in and then somebody that can not only def affect the defensive side of the ball, but also the attacking side as well. When you think of his best performances so far this season, when is he at his best? I think always at home when he has a like not the shyness to just push you know offensively because I think when he put his game offensively defensively then he's very aware as well and I think you need a lot of buys on his right side and it's where I think he's at his best he's not he's not shy to go forward because then he got really into the rhythm and you know he always have a very good game offensively and defensively. And for me, it's it's him getting forward. That that makes the other team's winger or, or wing back or whatever formation they're playing, and that makes that person defend and not have as much energy to attack. So I know that when I played the position, the more I could get forward, the more I knew that there was not going to be somebody that's going to then sneak behind me. So he needs to do a good job of of not only doing that at home when he feels confident, but also doing it on the road. Uh, I thought he did it well in the second half against Atlanta, and, and hopefully he will continue to get forward and, and produce on the offensive side of the ball. We're stepping away one more time, but first, here's the answer to this week's Union Trivia question. Bork Dojkal tallied 18 assists in the 2018 season, setting the record for the most in a single season in Union history. We'll be back right after this. Starting this year, every Union League match is on MLS Season Pass on Apple TV. 
Make sure to sign up today so you don't miss any of the action. You can also check out the live Whip Around show, MLS 360, or if you missed out on the live, you can relive every moment with full match replays. And get this, if you're a T-Mobile subscriber, you get the whole year of Season Pass content free of charge. Well, fellas, we have made it to the final segment here on Union Insider presented by Beanbow Bakeries USA, which means it is time for our All-State players to watch. So, Seba, who is your player heading into this Galaxy game that you're keeping an extra eye on? Daniel Gazdag. We, we need our number 10 to have a, a big game against LA. It was not the best performance last game. There is, like I said, again, two big road games, and we really need to play this level to really carry a lot of the load offensively for the team, and especially on this big field in LA. He's passing, I think, in like all the counter attack can be used to really find the person in the run and in the space. So I really hope to see him on the ball and really carry the offense. He's going to be the tone setter for this LA match? I think so too, yeah. I think it would be a, a good help for the team. All right, Shannon? For me, I'm going to go with Bedoya. I think that it's somebody that has now come back from injury and has been playing for the last two games. And he always pops up at timely moments, whether it's with a, a big assist or a big goal. And that's what they're going to need if they're going to pick up points on the road. I think that this will be a great game for him to maybe get a goal or an assist and, and really help the team pick up three points on the road. His work rate is always pretty unmatched, Bedoya, but he also brings so much experience. How, how much of a role does that actually play when you have this road stint that you're on? It's somebody that always seems to make the right decisions at the right time. So while he might not be in the game and you might not hear his name a bunch, it's somebody that when he's in that moment, he gets it right most of the time. So it's somebody, like I said, on the road, it's, those are the moments that you need to get right, and he usually gets them right. Awesome. That's going to do it for us. The Union will be on the road in Los Angeles this weekend, Saturday night to face the Galaxy. Kickoff is at 1030 on Apple TV, and Shannon will be alongside Dave Leno for the radio call on 97.5 The Fanatic. We're going to be here, as always, next week to talk all about it. So for Sevet, Shannon, and our entire crew, I'm Marissa Pilla. Have a great weekend, and thanks for watching.